The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game. Public enemies who try to destroy our America. With his faithful Filipino valet Cato, Briff Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with racketeers and saboteurs, risking his life that criminals and enemy spies will feel the weight of the law by the sting of the Green Hornet. Wide with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure Broken Cigarette Stuffs, the Green Hornet strikes again. loaded with war materials was approaching a small bridge a few miles from the city. Its schedule had been kept secret, and the track was clear so that no time would be lost getting the supplies to the port and awaiting ship. As the freight approached the bridge, the throttle was wide open. Only a few miles lay ahead to its destination. Then, just as the engine reached the far side of the bridge, it happened. This is so sudden. Why all the sweetness? Needing money, or do you have something you want me to take up with Mr. Reed for you? Neither, Casey. I still have a couple of bucks, and I do my own talking to Reed when I want a favor. I was just being nice to you, that's all. <laughs> I guess I'm not used to it. Mr. Reed asked me a while ago where you were. Sure, and Gunnigan sent me over to interview the traffic manager of the railroad, the one they had the wreck on. <laughs> hey, that's tricky English, but I get what you mean. Casey? I don't go for flowery talking. Just so you know what I mean, that's all that's needed. Well, between you and me, Axford, sometimes trying to figure out what you mean takes a lot of thought. Oh, is that so now? Well, between you and me, Casey, if it took any thinking on your part, you'd never know what I meant. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. And what's what more, I... Oh, you'd better go in and see Mr. Reed. He's waiting, you know. Really, no. Well, he can wait, that's what. I'll have you know when I get good and ready. I'm waiting to see you. Uh, oh, you read, I, I was coming right in, that I was. I, I wouldn't keep you waiting, Reed. Well, come in here, then. Sure, sure, I'm coming. <laughs> What's Miss Case laughing about? Sure, and she has them spells once in a while for not an authority. Oh, really? Well, go on in. Women are sure funny, Reed. Now take Casey, for instance. Well, that can wait. I didn't have you come in here to get your views on women. Gunnigan tells me you went over to interview the traffic manager of the railroad. How'd you make it out? Okay, Reed. That is, I talked to the guy. Uh, Mr. Milroy, his name is. He couldn't tell me any more than we know already. I see. Not inclined to talk, huh? Oh, he talked to me all right. He was friendly enough. But he said our news would have to come from the authorities. Well, I more or less expected that. Did he drop any hint as to whether he thought it was sabotage or not? No. Nope. He said they were starting the usual investigation, that's all. Was there any further news at police headquarters about the wreck last night? Well, not the new. The explosion happened as the train was crossing over the East Bridge. Yes, I know. Too bad about the train crew. Ah, oh, that it is. They didn't have a chance, looks like. People living out that way say the noise could be heard for miles around. The blast of the explosion, I mean. Yes. We do know that was a fast freight carrying war material. In a way, it's a break for the Japs, I guess. Say, no, Reed. You don't have any reason to believe it was sabotage, do you? <laughs> no. 
For more reason than anyone else could think that. I'll be interested, of course, in the report on the investigation. Yeah, if they release what they really think. Sometimes them guys who do the investigating are cagey with us newspaper guys, you know. Only when they have reason to be axed, you better get down to police headquarters and see if anything new breaks this afternoon. Okay, Reed. If anything interesting turns up, I'll let you know right away. So long. Bye, Axford. Oh, by the way. Forget something, Reed? Yes, a few days ago you took a bit of laundry I had in the office here, a couple of shirts. Where'd you leave them? Oh, that. Uh, I left it at a Chinese place around the corner. I got the ticket right here in my pocket. Uh, do you want it or shall I No, give me the ticket. Cato's stopping by for me at five and we'll pick it up on the way home. Okay. Here it is. Thanks. It was to be ready this morning, so I guess you can get it all right. So long. Goodbye. I wonder what's keeping Kato in that shop. Yeah, I'll go and see. Oh, it's you, Mr. Pritt. Well, man, say you wait while he look for bundles. I wondered what was keeping you. You have tickets, what? yes? Well, this man already gave you the ticket. What did he gather? So sorry. You wait a few minutes. I'll you look. walk quiet as a mice, Mr. Good. Yes, he startled me when he first spoke. I didn't see or hear him come from the back room. He doesn't take long. Ashtray here are filled up. Look like others wait for laundry, too, perhaps. Yeah, seems to be an old Chinese laundry custom to make people wait. Someone has cigarettes to waste. Why do you say that, Mr. Brito? Those cigarettes must notice how long they are. Each one broken in the middle. <laughs> it's a bad habit to have these days. Well, no doubt it's nervous habit. Yes, in this case, it's an expensive one. Those are English cigarettes, rather costly, not to mention scarce. So, sir, you wait. Here's a package. That would be one dollar, eleven cents. How much? One dollar, eleven... Eleven cents. Oh, dollar eleven. Yes, sir. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. You bring laundry again of some time, huh? Yes, thanks. Well, I oh, take one of a bit. All right, kiddo. Let's go. Kiddo, that's the office fellow. I'm taking the evening off to do a little night something. I don't want to be bothered. Yes, sir. This is Reed's apartment. Hello, Kiddo. This is Ashford. It's Reed there. Oh, it's you, Mr. Axford. Oh, Mr. Britt oh, say no, he... Oh, Kato, since it's Axford, I'll talk to him. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Axford. Hello, Axford. What's in your mind? Listen, Reed. I just come from Cox headquarters. The report on that investigation's in. Well? Sarge says it's off the record, Reed. He don't want nothing printed about it yet. And he says I can tell you... Well, all right, tell me. The investigators reported that the wreck was caused by an explosion. Oh, really? Well, since the explosion was heard for miles, that's going to be a difficult secret to keep. Oh, no, wait a minute, Reed. Give me a chance to finish, will you? <laughs> Go ahead. Well, they said the explosion was the result of a bomb. It was saboteurs that did it. I see. Did you find out any details, such as what convinced them that saboteurs set such a bomb? Sure. They found a couple of wires and a bomb fragment under the bridge. Well, that's certainly proof enough. It is that. Of course, Sarge says they have no clues as to who done it. Ask me for some dirty spy work, that's what. Well, that's brilliant thinking on your part, Axford. Sure. I keep the old head working overtime, Reed. <laughs> you know, when Sergeant Burke told me it was sabotage, I thought of him. Well, that's the quick as a wink about me taking spies where it works. I bet that slayed him. <laughs> slayed him, you say? Sarge almost choked because I thought of it first. He just glared at me and walked away. <laughs> well, I'll hang up now. Goodbye, Axford. <laughs> Never a chap who's as smart as he is. Mike Axford can really come up with some peculiar deductions at times. You know, he's decided spies caused that wreck since the investigators reported sabotage. <laughs> what does he think sabotage is? <laughs> well, well, Axford, well, not think before he speak at times. That must be it. Well, Axford said the authorities haven't found any clues that might lead them to the saboteurs. And in that case, there's nothing to prevent the guilty ones from doing more damage to hinder the war effort. Well, that's not a good... I'd like to drive out there to the wreck and look it over tonight. You go as Green Hornet, Mr. Blitz? Well, there's no need for that, Cato. I'm sure there are a good many curious people out there looking it over. I will take my regular car. Come on. Why we climb to the top of this big rock, Mr. Blitz? Well, because it's the best place to get a complete view of the scene. 
Dutch match will usually make it all as bright as day. Here we are. The wreck is spread all over. Yeah. Huh. Certainly a successful bit of work as far as the saboteurs were concerned. You better point the flashlight down there so we won't slip over the edge. It's pretty high up here. Uh, yes, sir. Over well, there. I'll put on light. Well, we're not too near edge. No, I guess. Oh, wait. Well, hold it down this way, man. Well, what do you think you see? Well, these. Hey, look. Oh. They've broken cigarette butt. Somebody else come up here to watch, perhaps. Yes. Looks as though somebody took a puff or two on each one and broke it in two and threw it away. <laughs> Yeah, it might not be a bad idea to follow that chap around with one short of a smoke. Let's see. An English mag, too. Could be the same man came up here that went to the Chinese laundry this afternoon. Well, maybe he take laundry to St. Clair's Wigo. The same brand, and each one is broken in two. That's right. He could have been the one who left those butts in the Chinese place. <laughs> and we seem to get around in the same places. Yes. I puzzled about Chinese laundry, man, Mr. Brick. Puzzled? Why? Well, back in the Philippines, I meet many Japanese, also many Chinese. Well? Japanese not able to pronounce letter L. The Chinese have difficulty with letter R. Men in laundry who are supposed to be Chinese not pronounce any L's today, Mr. Brick. I come to think of it, you're right, kid. You had trouble saying dollar and also saying eleven. You said sorry, all right. I think he's not Chinese, Mr. Britt. I see. You believe he's a Jap posing as Chinese? Yes, sir. I want to take a couple of these broken butts along. I took one from the laundry. It may be the same brand. Well, right, let's go. What are you going to do, Mr. Britt? I want to get to town, Kate. I'm going to phone the authorities and to investigate that laundry. So that, we'll see. So, Carl, my honorable friend... You have again proved your worth, huh? Are you sure those two men in the car ahead are the ones you see on the big rock? I'm sure, all right. I was going up there myself to take a look when I heard them talking. One of them picked up something from the ground. Well, I figured it was something the boss stopped when he was up there as lookout. When he was watching for us while we, we uh, put the bombs on the bridge yesterday. Mm, most unfortunate for them. And then, uh, like I said... I overheard one of the men say something about having the cops investigate the Chinese laundry. Well, I knew then that they were getting by, so I came back to tell you, Chuck. <laughs> they not get a chance to report to police. Make more speed now, Carl, and give me your gun. With two guns, I'd be more certain when we get the wrong side of them. Hurry! behind us seems to be in a hurry, kid. You better pull over and give him plenty of room. Yes, sir. Well, they're moving up fast. And they come. They keep up that speed. Look out, kid! We will continue our Green Hornet's adventure in just a moment. After leaving the scene of the railroad wreck, Britt Reed and Cato were returning to the city, unaware that they were being followed. They were taken entirely by surprise when Chang and the man known as Carl sped past and fired a volley of shots into Britt Reed's car, sending the car crashing into the ditch along the road. For a few moments after the crash, the two men in the wrecked car lay motionless. Then one of them stirred. Oh, oh. bad bump on the head. Not good. It all happened so quick. Mr. Brace. Mr. Brace. Please. Say you're not hurt bad. You must do something. Mr. Brace. Oh, what? What? Kato. Kato. I'm all right, Mr. Brace. Plenty all right. If you hurt bad, oh, maybe... I'm all right, too, Kato. banged up a little. Oh. It was a narrow escape for both of us. Uh, car is pretty much of a mess. Can you get the door open? I try. Good. You get out and I'll follow. Yes, sir. I guess I can make it. Ooh, I help. You hurt someplace, maybe? Oh, no, I'm okay. 
I'm sure going to favor this right arm for a while. What a crash. Who do you think to shoot at us, Mr. Britt? And why they do so? I have no idea, Cato. But we're going to catch a ride to town on the first train that comes along. When I get there, I'll phone the police about that laundry, and we'll try to get on the trail of the men who did this. And we won't stop until we find them. It's good to be home, Mr. Britt. You feel all right now? First rate, Cato. Your treatment did my bruises a lot of good. What's bothering me now is waiting for that call from Sergeant Burke. It's been two hours since I called him. Oh, he'll phone soon, perhaps. Are you okay? I told you you had an accident. I rushed up here as soon as I heard. Well, we're both okay, actually. Oh, thank heaven. What happened? Well, you we were shot at and run off the road. What? Holy crow. Who done it? If I find uh-huh, the guy, I... Take it but... easy. We don't know who it was. Say, Reed, ain't you going to put it in the Sentinel? No, actually. I didn't even tell Bert the detail. The killer knew who I was. He won't have the satisfaction of knowing I'm still alive. If he didn't know who I was, and there's no use letting him know. Well, no, maybe that makes sense. But I don't get it. Anyhow, oh, if I catch... Don't worry about it. Okay, Reed. Uh, why am I tired? Have a cigarette, Reed? <laughs> no, thanks. You're giving up those stogies you usually smoke? No, but uh, Mr. Milroy, uh, the railroad traffic manager you sent me to interview this morning, he gave me this whole pack of cigarettes. Look, fine ones they are, too. Hmm. English brand, huh? Eh? expensive. Oh, you'd never think so, the way he smokes them. Takes a puff or two, then breaks the button, too, and throws it away. Sort of a nervous habit, I guess. Yes. Yes, it must be. We use the expensive English cigarettes and breaks the butts in half, huh? That's right, Reed. To my way of thinking, the guy... Mr. Reed's apartment? This is Sergeant Burke. Is Mr. Reed there? Oh, yes, sir. It's Sergeant Burke, Mr. Burke. Oh, good. Hello, Sergeant. I've been waiting to hear from you. I know. Well, Mr. Reed, we went over to that Chinese laundry you called me about. Well, what'd you find out? There must have been something to what you expected to... Wasn't anyone there and things were messed up. Like as if they scrammed out in a big hurry. Well, that's strange. Somebody must have tipped them off. I guess my suspicion that the proprietor was a Jap instead of a Chinese is right. Maybe so. Whatever he is, he sure didn't want to mix with the police. Funny how he knew we were coming there. Yes, isn't it? We have a couple of boys watching the place. If he comes back, he'll be picked up for questioning. I'll let you know if it happens. Well, thanks, Sergeant. Don't mention it. Say goodbye, Mr. Reed. Goodbye. What's he calling about, Reed? Well, Kato and I suspected that laundryman of being a Jap, and I phoned Burke so we could investigate. Supper and snakes. And he didn't say a word to me about it. Wait till I see him. I'll make his ears burn. That I will. I'm going right down to cop's headquarters now. So long. Goodbye, Mr. See you later, Axman. So Sergeant Fine of Burke has flown. Yes. The more I think about it, the more things seem to fit together, Kato. Did you hear what Axman said about Milroy? Yes. He said Mr. Milroy used English brand cigarettes and breaks stubs in half. Right. I'd like to know more about Milroy. Let me have that phone book. Yes, sir. Here it is. Thanks. Why you not tell police that maybe Milroy connected with laundryman? Well, he's a man in a responsible position. Also, the broken cigarette stubs are too flimsy as evidence. It could be entirely circumstantial. Here's what I want. He could have gone into that laundry legitimately, and it would be natural for Milroy to have viewed the wreck. Mm-hmm. Strange about laundry men. Yes. You know, Cato, the only time we discussed the laundry man was up on that big rock. Someone must have overheard us and followed our car. They attempted to kill us and then warned that Jap in case one of us lived to talk. What you do about Milroy? Or well, perhaps you think well, you're the police would have nothing to go on. There's no reason why the Green Hornet can't investigate Milroy. I got his home address from the phone book. And Cato, there's no time like the present. Come on, let's get going. <laughs> In the study of his home in the suburbs to the north of the city, Lowell Milroy sat at his desk going over some papers before him. Suddenly he was startled by a voice close behind him. Good evening, Mr. Milroy. What the... What? Oh, the Green Hornet. How did you get in here? To the French window behind you. There's really no trouble to open. Why have you come here? Maybe I was sent here by a certain so-called Chinese laundryman. I don't know what you're talking about. Get out before I call the police. I'm not stupid enough to let you do that. Have a cigarette? I have my own, thanks. Good. I'll have one of yours. Well, 
You certainly have your nerve. I see you smoke an English brand. Well, I'll save this one to later. Incidentally, I've come across this brand before. Very recently, too. I'm not interested in your likes and cigarettes. Get out of here. Maybe your interest lies in other directions. Hobnobbing with that certain laundryman I mentioned. Are you crazy? You came here with the intention of robbing me. You'll be disappointed. I have no money in the house to speak of. Speaking of money, I imagine whoever caused that wreck last night received plenty for doing it. You know a great deal, perhaps. In fact, so much that I'll probably notify the police that you had something to do with that wreck. I've been blamed for lots worse, Milroy. Maybe you could use my services sometime. Get out. Get out, I say. Okay. But you're not inclined to make any deals tonight. Maybe I'll come back when you're in a better mood. That hornet knows something. Thinks he does. After tonight, I... Hello, Chang. This is Milroy. I just had a visit from the Green Hornet. He knows something. Yes. After tonight, we'd better sever connections for a while. That's right. Now listen. In about half an hour, that troop train will come on the north track, as I told you. You have it fixed so that the engine will set it off as it comes out of the tunnel? Good. I'll wait in the old farmhouse there till I come out. We'll watch it together. All right. Goodbye. You dirty traitor. You what? Uh... I thought I'd left. Oh, well, I haven't, and I heard every word. It won't do you any good. No, you don't. Do you need help? Yes, quick. What to do? Well, I cut the cords from the Venetian blinds and tie this skunk. You get on the phone and call the police. Tell them to go to the farmhouse near the North Railroad Tunnel and grab the supplies they find there. What we do? I will stow this trader in the luggage compartment and take him with us. We're already on the north side and get to that tunnel quicker than anyone else in the Black Beauty. Kitty, we've got to get out there in time to save a troop train. Why well, we stop at far end of the tunnel when bomb at other end? We couldn't get close enough for the Black Beauty to the other end. Hurry, Kato. This tunnel's about 300 yards long. That train should be Not to think that, Mr. Blitz. We almost there. The train is coming. Run, Kato. Run. <laughs> There's a tunnel exit. Let's for the bomb. Must be a percussion cap on the rail somewhere. I look inside. You look that side. Here, Kato. I found it. Help me get it loose. Be careful. This train comes fast. This fast and tightly. <laughs> You've got to get it loose and get out of the way with it. Meantime, in a window of the old farmhouse, Chang and Carl stood watching. A two train should be along any minute now. Hmm, yes. We are to witness a wonderful sight, Carl. Listen. It's coming. All right. All right, you two. Get him up. Cop, use your gun, Cop. Oh, oh. Good shooting, you got today. Get him out of here, boys. We're taking him to headquarters. Come we on. have done nothing. It is you who attacked us. No use, Cheng. When that bomb goes off, they'll know. Bomb? What is he talking about, Sarge? Hear that train? That is train of your troops. As it reads the tunnel down there, a bomb will go off. Change prison. Okay. Holy crow. It's in the tunnel. Great St. Patrick, don't let it happen. In two seconds now. <laughs> ah, shut up, you grinning ape. Ah, oh. Good. Sarge, I can't bear to watch. Try it. Thank heaven. It's, it's out of the tunnel, safe away. Oh, it, bomb. it didn't go off. Lucky for you, it didn't. Cover you men go down there and find that bomb. The rest of you take these sneaking flies to the car. We'll be turning them over to the FBI tonight. Get moving. Later in Britt Reed's apartment. And that's the whole story, Mr. Reed. You see, when we got back... We found Milroy tied up and lying on the steps at headquarters like a trust rooster. <laughs> Them other two had already implicated him, and he mentioned the harness. Reed, you should have been there, watching and waiting, thinking that at any minute a big explosion was going to send all them boys to glory. Well, I'm telling you, it was the worst moment of my life. 
Axford, believe it or not, I know just how you felt at that moment. There have been times when I've had that same feeling myself. Thank <laughs> you. 